All right, let's talk Encanto. First off, I just want to say that I really am enjoying what my new uh, intro music is. Once again, as my older intro music was from the first 120 some odd entries, was a small riff from my my actual band from many years ago. That is also, this new intro is also a riff from a completely different song. I just felt that it needed to kind of have a little bit more pizzazz, be a little bit shorter, kind of get to, you know, my wonderful voice a little bit quicker. So I hope you appreciate the new tunes, uh, as I do, because I enjoy what I did in that band, and that's why I use that music, as well as it being kind of copyright-free, because I am partially the owner of that music, so nobody can come after me for it. So, moving forward, in Kanto, what took all of us by surprise, I would say, in late 2021, sometime around November, end of November, uh, I mean, I'm going to say by surprise simply because, you know, you expect amazing things to come from Disney, but you, there are certain films that, you know, they, they would release that you kind of stop yourself and you go, Oh, what's this going to be about? You know, where is this going to go? What, uh, what's the new story going to be? These aren't films like the, um, uh, like anything in the MCU or in the DC universe, you know, Disney films, there, there's no overall connection. So it's like, oh, you miss a Disney film, you miss a Disney film. Like, I didn't watch uh, Brave until many years after Brave was even released. Now, I highly regretted that after I finally watched it because Brave is an amazing film. So because of how amazing Brave was and how I learned not to do that, I definitely have decided to catch as many of the uh, Disney films as I possibly can that are Disney films. You know, I'm not saying Star Wars. I'm not saying Marvel. I'm saying Disney films, just pure Disney films, singular stories, maybe sequels. You know, not everything is a Toy Story. Not everything is, you know, uh, Frozen and Incredibles, things that get sequels. I think this is a film that's pretty good at being on the level that it's on. And it's it's a really good film. I'm not going to say it's a bad film. I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it. I highly enjoyed it. It's just a matter that it took a lot of, I guess, after the film discussion to really understand a lot of what the film was trying to tell. Now, there are sometimes things that I expect uh, a film to do with when it comes to that. Like, there's a lot of films... There's a director whose name is um, uh, Ari Aster, who he's done films like Hereditary and Midsommar. Those are films that... I expect to question when I'm leaving movie theaters. The film that came out maybe eight years ago or so with Jennifer Lawrence called Mother, I still have questions about a film like that. I wasn't expecting to have a lot of questions about a film like this, especially a Disney film. Like, usually films aren't meant to have a lot of questions. And a lot of my questions about it was, you know, why didn't Maribel get a gift by the end of it what was maribel's gift why is it that every character seems to have this point where it should have some sort of story developing moment but it just falls short in a way and that's how i felt walking out of it now after a couple of days and you know seeing other point of views mainly my wife's because she thought it was great and we were exchanging you know we were talking about it back and forth just casual conversation And there were a lot of things she brought to my attention that I don't know if she looked up, but she did kind of like it was how she how she took the film, how she took the storytelling of the film. And then I learned that maybe it is me just being too critical. Maybe I am being too critical of what I was watching and maybe I should just watch it for what a Disney film should give me. But even when I watched it in that manner, I still felt like I fell short on understanding the story altogether because you have all these members of this family and it's kind of like the first 10 minutes, it's all about Maribel and the relationship with her nephew who's getting who it's his birthday and he's meant to get the gift and he's meant to get the door in the house and the house is all magical. So you get that. And then after all that happens, the boy kind of fades into the background. 
And then she spe- spends about five or ten minutes with each individual family member learning all these different things. And only a couple of them really get, like, like overshining moments where it's all just about them and her relationship with them. Two of them being her sisters, which makes sense. You know, her sisters are kind of the important p- portrayal of what I guess they're trying to do. The, the concept of close enough family, almost. But... You know, as it moves forward and as it progresses, you know, you you can understand that it is mainly about Maribel's story and what what she herself is taking from all of the family members, especially with the idea that when uh, Bruno left, understanding how his character was and what his gift was and how it played a role in all the decision making that they did moving forward. So... When you look at it through other lenses like that, you can find more appreciation for it. Now, I do see the appreciation for it. And again, these were all critical thinking points that I came up with when I first watched it. And when you watch it a second time and you kind of look at these critical thinking points and these storytelling arcs, you see a lot of what they were trying to go for. But again, like... Where is the the over? Maybe it's just that there is too many characters. Almost maybe that is what kind of makes you feel like you might get lost in some of the storytelling. You know, this isn't like uh, Raya the Last Dragon. It isn't like Moana, where the storylines are very singular and the story building is very much towards what the end goal is. You know what the end goal is, and you know what Maribel is trying to do. But all of these other characters, they're not, they're meant to seem important, but then they don't feel, I don't feel like they get enough importance thrown upon them. They're almost like side character families in like a National Lampoon's Vacation movie, where you know that these are the characters and you know that this is what they do, and you don't need enough, you don't need to know too much in order to understand what their, what what the overall purpose of them in the storyline is. So, when you look at it through that eyes... It doesn't necessarily matter, I guess, when it comes to the progression of the story or how it chooses to get there. What matters is that it gets there. But still, when you think about when it finally gets there and you don't see that Maribel gets anything, maybe that might upset you. But truthfully, she does get something. And this has obviously been something that has been theorized and proven and everybody knows that that's what it sort of is. And it's the fact that Maribel is meant to take 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 over the role of abuela when abuela passes away forgive my poor pronunciation of the word i am very much just a a white new yorker who doesn't speak spanish however moving forward you see that that's what she's trying to do she's going to be the new abuela of the house so that's her gift because through the whole movie you see that the only gift that abuela has is that she's the overall hierarchy the top of the chain of the family but now this is all about the new generation and moving forward with that new generation and how in order to be better and do better than how how many generate how many years how many decades that has led up through um abuela being the run of the house now maribel is going to eventually take up that role and need to oversee everybody and that is essentially what her gift is it's the torch passing of maribel eventually becoming the new abuela now knowing that maybe there is room for a sequel maybe seeing later on you know 10 years down the line in in the universe of where Encanto takes place, the unfortunate passing of Abuela has already happened. Maribel takes up the mantle. You have, you know, the strong sister and the beautiful sister. They're all kind of running the household and they're doing the, the family's getting bigger. And maybe that could be a story. I don't know. Um, But when you see that, you can kind of see that it, the, the, the real gift You know, of course, there's always an underlining meaning to Disney films. The real gift is family. And you really do fall in love with the family because they are it is it is a very much enjoyable film. And I definitely enjoyed the film both times that I've seen it. Uh, And the only thing that I will say is that I don't think We Don't Talk About Bruno is the best song of that film. To me, Pressure is a way better song way catchier, way more involved in what the overall story is. And it's just, 
I don't see, I don't get how certain songs are the ones that get to be big in these films. And I, I didn't understand it with Frozen. I don't, understand, I don't understand it, but then again, I'm also not a kid, and I probably feel like when I was a kid, I probably annoyed thousands of adults with all the music that I loved from all of my Disney films. So if we don't talk about Bruno as the new kid favorite, then by all means, let it be the new kid favorite. But I see more adults singing the damn song than anybody else, and I'm going to tell you, if you're an adult listening to this, and you like the song We Don't Talk About Bruno... Give pressure another listen and really understand that there it is way better than We Don't Talk About Bruno. And I will take that to the grave and I will say that forever. We Don't Talk About Bruno sucks and pressure is way, way better. 